Why should you give a rats about what's happening on TikTok? It's a fair question. I'll tell you why. It's because the majority of people watching TikTok are kids. These kids will become the adults of tomorrow. And the messages and the lessons that they are being taught on TikTok will be what they truly believe as they get older. Now I've thoroughly researched TikTok over the last couple of months and I've found that 50% of the content is actually just chicks dancing around with no bra on and the titties flopping and flipping everywhere. Which is probably why the vast majority of people who use TikTok are 13 year old to 17 year old boys just ripping the fucking ears off it. But it's not just ladies and their unsupported bristles and their fat dump trucks. There's also hundreds of hot blokes on TikTok not wearing underpants or shirts and just wearing really loose shorts and flipping and flopping their cock around. It's very confronting to have a dick swinging at you when you're about to fall asleep. That's what she said. <laughs> But there's also some content on there that is fucking painful to watch. It is so woke, you want to blow your fucking head off. So I thought, why don't we take a seat and have a bit of a look, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive deep into this absolute mess. Their bodies are worthy if they're healthy or they're not. And if you say that that's not true, I'll kick you in the crotch. I tell you what, the Wiggles have really let themselves go. This is this is confronting stuff. You say you're just concerned, but I know that's insincere. And if you don't stop trolling, I will kick you in the rear. There's a lot of threats of violence in here, but I doubt that you have the dexterity to pull that off. In fact, I think you have the dexterity or athletic ability of a 170 year old gigantic Galapagos tortoise. This is why fat shaming should be encouraged in schools. Okay, I'm half in cosplay, but this is important. I'm so fucking angry. Oh, please tell us why you're angry. We need to know. I made a video about being a lesbian with a boyfriend. What? My boyfriend is non-binary, he prefers masculine terms, and he uses he, they pronouns. Alright, so I, I guess you can be a lesbian with a boyfriend because it doesn't necessarily mean you, 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 you're no longer like women. You're just having a bit of a break. You need to split the whisker every now and then. But do you, you consider them a woman because they're non-binary, but they're not a woman, they're non-binary. So your argument isn't that they're non-binary, it's that they're a woman, but your argument also says that they are women but, but also non-binary, so that wouldn't mean that they're binary. That, so that would mean they're binary. I'm confused. Well, no shit. I thought the whole point of being a lesbian was you're giving up on balls and dicks, right? It's like you got a nut allergy. You just got to fucking get rid of all of them. All of them out of the house. All the dicks. Get, get, get. But you can't kick all the dicks out and then sneak into the pantry and have a spoonful of peanut butter. You've made your choice. It's all over. Nobody needs you to advocate for how difficult it is to use gender neutral pronouns. Nobody said that the gender binary was f***ing easy. These are not my preferred pronouns. These are my pronouns. You will use them or you will not refer to me at all. Okay, I will use one if they ask nicely, but stop being the personification of an asshole. No one wants to hear what you have to say or what you want people to call you if you're being mean. Cupial sexual people may decide to have a sexual relationship despite not feeling sexual attraction while others don't. Both are completely valid and communication is key. Yep, yeah, communication is key in any relationship, I completely agree. Cupisec- Asexual and cupisexual. I don't understand why the youth needs so many labels. Why do you need to label everything? Whether or not you're asexual, cupy supple, um, you're super supple, or whatever you fucking are, is not important. Why do you need to push this out to the world? The only person that you need to ever have that conversation with is the person that's entering you or you're entering them. And also, on the topic of labels, doesn't gay, straight, and bi cover everything. You're either rooting the opposite sex, you're rooting the same sex, or you're doing both. Covers everything. And if you believe genuinely that you need a particular label for yourself, grow up. I'm trying to phrase this nicely and I can't yell, but I want to. So, um, black people and people of color in the queer community aren't seen by white queers as as queer as they are. It would appear you need to work on your queerness, all right? If you're out there and you're a person of color, it appears you need to suck more dicks if you're a bloke, eat more puss if you're a lady, and do both if you're into gender, all right? You need to work on your queerness. That is obviously what needs to happen here. On 
almost every occasion where I've been discussing my queerness or my experiences with queerness with white gays, they speak to me in a condescending way and they treat me as if I am a straight person imposing on a queer subject. Oh, very well known that white gay people are even worse than straight people. So I want an apology from all the white gay people in the comments. Apologize now. For what? I don't know. Queerness is seen as um, something that is white and a way to, to compare oppression and it's used to compare oppression. So it's impossible for white gays to see us as, as gay as them. The LGBTQ community has been used as a front to hide racism or to excuse racism. This is the thing with wokeness and wokeness in society. You will never be woke enough. No matter what you do, you will never be woke enough. It is insidious in nature. It's always trying to compete against itself and, and eat its own. Feminists and, and woke people and, and the social justice warriors, they're always trying to eat their own. That is how they work. My hands will never harm me. Stop. No hookups. Bro, that was so hilarious. People just want to be treated with respect and not like objects. <laughs> okay, firstly, I can't sing anything. It's just a floating head. <laughs> crazy stuff. Yikes. <laughs> You're just- What is going on with that laugh? It looks like there's a KFC bone stuck on your larynx, love. Just mad because we live in your head rent free. <laughs> Knee slapper. Bring it here, bro. No. I noticed in the hashtags um, next to this, um, video uh, that it's, it says hashtag eating disorder recovery. I declare you recovered. <laughs> thin privilege part two, unexpected thin privileges. I'm Ooh. not subject to you. Part two, very exciting. Genics and could receive fertility treatments if I wanted to, and my kids wouldn't be taken away from me for being the same body size as me. Your kids must be pretty fucking big to be taken off you. Like, like for a child to be taken off its parent for being too fat, like its parent, they would have to be pretty big. They'd have to be so big that you have to cut out a hole in the wall just to get them out the front to get on the school bus. And by school bus, I mean crane. And by school, I mean the, the ocean. My BMI doesn't exclude me from being able to donate my body to science. And med students have studied cadavers of my size. People of my size are included in clinical trials and medicines are made for people around my weight. When I die, my weight isn't going to be the first thing that's blamed or marked as my cause of death, even if it had nothing to do How with why I died. How can blaming other people? Why don't you look at what you've done to yourself? Grow up. No, actually, that's a terrible verb to use. Shut up. There she is again, just a floating head. Um, yeah, BMI is a shit way to measure health. Uh, in most cases, considering that if you're a bodybuilder, you'd be uh, your your body mass index would say that you're overweight or obese. But I don't think she's winning any Mr. Olympias anytime soon, or Mrs. Olympias. Just a reminder that I am very fat and very sexy. Imagine being that far up your own ass that you you feel the need to explain to people how sexy you are. Fuck, get over yourself, mate. I want to show you the email I sent in response to my teacher saying they won't be using my pronouns this semester. Okay, so this is one of these big ones that's happening in America all the time. They're very full on about what type of pronouns you call people in universities. We know that Jordan Peterson was big on this. He was happy to call people whatever pronouns they want, but he didn't want to be forced by university uh, rules and by Canadian law. So let's see what the, this um, person's, see what I did there? Professor came back and said when, she, when fucking did it again. This person asked for a change in the pronouns. I'm sorry, I think there was a misunderstanding here. You seem to think I'm making some kind of a request. So, straight off the bat, they're being heaps of fucking aggressive about it. Like, you've got to understand that if you're asking someone to change the way they speak the English language, you're going to need to be really nice about it because there is nothing saying that they have to do that or should do that or it, there's nothing saying it makes sense. So if you request someone to do that and they don't do it, then okay, move on. I was just informing you of my correct name and pronouns so you know how to refer to me. Intentionally misgendering a student is actively creating a hostile learning environment and discriminating on the basis of gender identity. You're creating that hostile learning environment. You're making it a big deal. You're there to learn. You're not there to make friends or any of that shit. Just fucking learn and go home and then hang out with all your gender buddies. Is it fatphobic to not want yourself to be fat? 
fat? Is it fat phobic not to want yourself to be fat? So obviously this is a loaded question, probably like her fries. Um, you don't want to be fat. Why don't you want to be fat? Okay. You don't want to be fat because you want to be healthy. You also don't want to be skinny because you don't, because that's not healthy either. Phobia is a fear of something. So maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe it's just you want to be healthy. The biggest defense of that argument is like, what, why is it a problem for me to have a preference about the way that my body looks? Yes, tell us why it's a problem, please. We need to know. So I think this is a twofold thing. First of all, preferences don't exist in a vacuum. The reason that you would prefer to have a thin body is because of society's fat phobia. So society is fat phobic. Back in the 17th century, 18th century, there were a lot of voluptuous women and that's what people were after back in the Dizay, probably because it meant that they were quite healthy. They were eating a lot of food, all that type of shit. But now it doesn't mean that. In fact, it means the opposite. So society has changed its ways. And there's no doubt that obviously the, the film industry, the, the media, the magazines, all that type of stuff, they promote that skinny, shitty look. Like, and they even do it, like they did that in the 90s and they even do it now with the Kardashians this whole um, unobtainable look, the big fat ass that you can only get if you get implants. Now, I think societies just move on and either you move with the times or you get left behind. That is not an isolated thought that you came up with. So yeah, it is your preference, but do some critical thinking. Where did that come from? Did you just tell me to critically think? That is the most hypocritical thing I've ever heard anyone ever say ever. And two, I think that's a super bogus and lazy way to like write off this whole conversation. Because if people really started to question, why do we think this way? And why do we value thinness so much? We, we, we value thinness. And I don't think thinness is the right word. We value fitness because it's hard to obtain. It's like when someone gets butt implants or a, or a Brazilian butt lift, right? We judge that because you can get that by training hard. We don't judge breast implants that harsh anymore, which I think is good, because you can't get big teats naturally. You get a chest, but you're not gonna get big cans. You're either born with it or you're not. So if you have to work hard for something, people respect that more. That's enough about the fatties. Let's move on. A legit question. What is a non-binary parent called by their children? Hi there, non-binary dad. My kids call me Nini. Nini? I do that at primary school. What does your dad do? Oh, mate, he's a firefighter. What does your mum do? Oh, she's a police officer. What about your dad? No, no, it's Nini. Nini is my dad. Could you imagine the bullying? I grew up Christian, and I'm convinced Christian supremacy is a bigger threat than white supremacy. Right, be a good motherfucker, I can't do it anymore. Peace the Middle East, grow not a shower. Keep it moist, toodle off, fucking noodle noodle, bye.